Welcome, everyone. My name is Bianca Tinkenreich. I am a PhD candidate at Northern Arizona University, and I'm also a research scientist at Globant. I'm here today, very happy to present you a study about women's participation in open source software, which is good to be this time because we had amazing presentations today about imposter syndrome and about code of conduct and other things that I'm going to cover here. And it's like I'm doing now a wrap up of many things that it's been covered by the, last, the previous presentations. So uh, what is this study about? We aggregated the literature. This is a secondary study. It's a, a mapping study of the literature that we go there and search for what we want to discover, and then we aggregate the, the knowledge for you. So instead of reading uh, 2, 000, close to 2,400 papers, I aggregated the knowledge for you, and, and we also uh, mapped and did a meta-analysis about women's participation in open source. This is a paper that was uh, recently accepted by the Transactions on Software Engineering Methodology. Here you can uh, have a link directly to the paper. It is being published already. So what is, how are women participating in open source? We investigated the papers, and through inductive analysis, we could understand how many women are there we, we talk a lot about rates, rates, percentages of women, but how is this being measured? So how many women are there? Who are the women who part participating? Uh, why they are in? So motivations to join and to stay in open source. How do they participate? What kind, what types of contributions are women doing? What is hurting? What are the challenges faced by women in open source? And what is the literature proposing to increase women participation, mitigate those challenges and increase women participation? So uh, let's talk about rates. The women participation have been uh, measured by different ways. We can measure, the literature is, being, is measuring women through mining repositories and through surveys. What is the difference between that? When mining software repositories, we can understand, we get the codes, we get the data, and then we can infer if the author, if the committer is a man or a woman, or uh, through different types of inference. So we can use um, automated tools and also manual process to infer the gender. So besides the, the mining that can be done in software repositories, mailing lists, also in events, so events participation, who are the women, who are the, the people registered in events. This is also being reported by papers. And another way of uh, understanding the rates of women is self-reporting. So in surveys, we have usually a question about what gender do you identify. So it's a self-reporting way of understanding the rates of women. And uh, when we analyzed these, uh, these rates, we could see that women are better represented earlier in the, in the joining process. How that? The rates of women are being very high, higher in the uh, participation in, in mentorship programs, for example, than in the core, in, in central open source roles. So there are papers reporting women as core developers, and those rates are much lower than the rates of women who are uh, participating in mentorship uh, events. And why is it happened? We are going to be back on that. Who are the women contributing to open source? So we analyzed also in the papers some demographics, some details about women to understand who are the women being reported in the study. We could see that uh, they are at least undergraduates. They devote less than five hours a week to open source. There are papers reporting that more than a half are devoting less than five hours a week. What does it represent? It's maybe 
that for most of the women, open source is not being a full-time job. So uh, there are papers showing that 20% uh, percent have no children and 47% not married and 77% contribute for less than five years, are recent contributors. These numbers are increasing over time. And they concentrate their work in a few projects. Instead of going everywhere, they usually concentrate, according to the papers, they concentrate in less um, projects. And what motivates women? So this is the why. Why are you in? What is the force that pushes you, pulls you into open source? What motivates you to contribute? So we analyzed also the, this question. And we could understand by looking at categories of motivations in open source, we could see that uh, the papers are reporting that altruism, pay, reciprocity, kinship, and learning are motivators, are strong factor motivators by wo for women. While fun, for example, that is being reported as, as a strong motivators, uh, motivator for uh, an open source contributor as a whole is not being so, so uh, relevant for women. So fun is not being a, a relevant motivation for women according to the papers that was, were part of this study. And why are women not motivated by fun? We can get to this later. What types of contributions do women make? Women can make any contribution they want, but we, may, we look at that, the literature to see what are the papers reporting about the contributions. So, uh, if we separate into two main categories of coders and non-coders, we could see that women, uh, for close to half, 45%, are only non-coders. What is a non-coder? Is, is, a, is a person who has a role that is not connected to developing code. It can be a community manager, can be a project manager, can be many other roles. This is a subject for another study. But we can see that 31% is a lower number, are only coders, and 24% is a good both. So we can see this intersection of women who are executing both code and non-code contribute, accumulating roles. We can also see the low rates of core developers here, 2% to, to 10, and uh, they are authors of 5% of pull requests. I'm going to get to you in the end, okay? What challenges do women face? So the papers are also reporting challenges, barriers, difficulties, we are aggregated this only as a challenges. What challenges are being faced? So lack of peer parity, not having, feeling alienated, frustrated, invisible, like less comfortable without other women around. The non-inclusive communication are being really uh, explored here in this, in this conference, so expellative, often use it in mailing lists, in documentations, in code reviews that are insulting to women. And this asterisk is that it's because it was reported by papers as a reason to leave. The toxic culture is very explored here too. So incidents of symbolic violence, harassment, sexism that can be both benevolent and, and negative against women, bringing the hostility can, can make them hinder their, their gender while doing contributions. The imposter syndrome was also covered by, by another uh, presentation here today, is when be, even being competent, being able and very competent, women face a lack of self, uh, uh, lack of self-efficacy. They feel they are not so efficient and being more restrained, can avoid uh, display their genders. So what is gender identified contributions? This can be uh, happening because of the imposter syndrome. So women can, can have their contributions less accepted when they show their gender. So according to the literature, there are studies showing that uh, 
when not disclosing the gender, the, the pull request can be more accepted than, than the other genders, but when showing that they are a woman, their pull request can be less accepted. The work-life balance issues is like having family constraints and not having like paid leaves and vacations, for example. Community reception issues is, uh, it was mentioned by papers like, it's hard to find a mentor when you're a woman, for example, because it can be understood as an invitation to go out, an invitation like if I approach a man uh, to, to find a, a mentor, he can understand that, that I am like trying a dating opportunity, for example. It was reported by the papers. And stereotyping, stereotyping is, is a very uh, hard uh, challenge that can, can lead women to understand they can be only non-coders, for example, and coders are only men. So this is also a challenge very reported in the literature. And what strategies are the papers reporting to increase women? What are the papers reporting? How can we increase women according to the literature? So we can provide awareness and statistics of women, contributors that can help to reduce the lack of peer parity, the, the challenge of lack of peer parity, knowing that there are other women around. We can awake uh, promote uh, specific groups and events, so awake technological vocations in girls since the school to, and it, this is happening here a little bit, but not only for girls, but that was a previous prevent, presentation from Red Hat, very interesting on that. So awake the technological vocations and girls and organize group specifics for women because it was reported by papers that women feel safer when they are on, in women-only groups. So they can uh, disclose more easily their identity, disclose also personal information when they feel safe and they feel safer in women-only groups. So these stereotypes roles, as I was saying, not say that a coder is a man, a non-coder is a woman, they leave the stereotypes out of the door uh, promote using the inclusive language is something that we are seeing a lot. And it's not only the guys that needs to be avoided, it's like really being inclusive uh, to understand what harms women, what, fa what do they feel is not comfortable for them. Uh, showcase the, the success of women, so give visibility of achievements when women have something that happens, showcase them and help to the, give visibility and also recognize their achievements. Encourage, but also be welcoming to women. Prepare mentors to guide women. So the mentors who are going to guide women need to understand what are the difficulties that women, under, that women face to help them to overcome those challenges. Create and also enforce a, case, a code of conduct. It was also talked today, earlier here, a very nice presentation about how to uh, overcome the incidence of code of conduct. And promote women to leadership roles, but also prepare women to be there. Because it's not only putting women on a stage, but prepare, give training, give mentorship to women to how to be there, how to be there and, and do the job they need to do. So let's connect the dots. Now I'm going back to what I said before. What's happening? The leaky pipeline was that I was showing in the, in the beginning. We could see that women are joining the mentorship programs. They are trying to get in because the percentages are higher there around 14 and 15% are women, but we can see that this pipeline goes down to close to four or 5% when, uh, when we talk about core developers. So this is a leaky pipeline. Women are trying to get in over and over the years, but they are not staying. So what is happening to this leaky pipeline? One thing is the motivation against the project culture. I don't know if you remember the motivation slide 
One of the strongest motivations by uh, felt by women is kinship, for example. Kinship is, is like, I want to participate, I want to be together, I want to collaborate, I want to belong. But if I have this motivation, for example, this is so intrinsic motivation, and I face a, a toxic culture in the project, this is going to be against my motivation. So I don't want to stay on that. So this is, can be like forces going against, and we need to understand all the forces and align them to be towards so women can stay. What about also the leaky pipeline about help, helping women to believe in open source as a career? Only 4% uh, in one study, only 4% of women join open source because they believe in open, that open source can help them to achieve other opportunities. So this is a career motivation, different than pay. Pay is like, I, I am contributing because I'm being paid now. And career is that I, I understand it can help me in the career. So if, imagine if only 4% join because they believe in a career, but then when analyzing the reasons to stay, this, this number goes up almost six, ta six times. And why? Why are women staying because of career? Because maybe after overcoming some of the joining challenges, they now believe in open source in a career. So we need to show what is the strategy related to that. We need to show women that open source, yes, can be a career to women, and show the many roles they can, they can uh, play in open source. So they can play many roles, and open source, yes, can be a career for you. So we can attract more women. So we can help with the leaky, leaky pipeline, attract and stay. Another one about the leaky pipeline is the imposter syndrome. I, I started to talk about this in the challenge, but the imposter syndrome is a challenge that is increasing because of maybe others. So, okay, we underrepresented groups are not only in open source, not only software engineer, but usually have more imposter syndrome. But when they face a toxic culture, this imposter syndrome can be amplified. So this can be even worse. And this can be happening to women when they are there and then they are leaving. So this is important for us to understand, to visualize, and to deal with, to train our people, and to look in our communities. Takeaway. So we can combine strategies. If we go. To the, to the strategies list, we can see that like, for example, publishing success stories of women in media can promote the awareness of pre presence of peers. And then we can, we can mitigate the lack of peer parity. But it can also attract more women and recognize at the same time the women who are there. So we are combining the strategies. This media exposure can include women's posts and pictures, and then we are also helping to de-stereotype the contributor, showing that contributors are also women. Uh, Women-only forums and, and can be also promoting groups, and when, when there are uh, women-only forums and they are safer to speak up, we can have an analysis of the messages that are circulating that, and then see what are the problems and the challenges they are facing and discussing to proactive help, and also offer opportunities to, for them to showcase some success, to showcase, and then this is all, all everything integrated. So we can integrate the strategies to have better results. Uh, Thank you to my uh, co-authors. One of the co-authors is here, Mark Cogerosa. Um, I'm going to use the rest of the time to tell you about, OK, Bianca, and then what are the next steps. So this is part of my PhD project. It's about supporting women, increasing women in open source. And as I was talking uh, to you about the forces, so we need to understand what are the forces that pull women in open source? What are the forces that push 
women against open source. And what else? Its motivations, their challenges, and the next force that I'm going to explore, I'm already doing this, is the sense of belonging. Why this force? Because remember that one of the motivation was very strong for women is kinship. And kinship is, it includes the sense of belonging in there. Sense of belonging is a very intrinsic and need, a, woman, a human need that is on top of Maslow pyramid uh, next to recognition and is the, the need to belong to something, the need to belong to a group, the need to belong to something. So uh, I'm exploring the sense of belonging. I have, I am running, I ran a, an, already a study with the Linux kernel and we are planning to extend this, this, this study with other communities so we are already ready to, we know how to measure the sense of belonging. It's not only do you belong, so we know how to measure this. We want to understand, we are exploring what comes before, who feels the belong, who, what happens before, what comes before the sense of belonging, what are the consequences of feeling and not feeling the sense of belonging, so can push you in and out of not feeling or feeling, and strategies to foster. So I have here my, my uh, Twitter, if you are interested, I'm in the last part of my PhD project. I'm planning to graduate this, this, this year yet, but <laughs> thank you. And, uh, but I have space for uh, more, one more study, so also have other people to continue after that. Uh, so if you want to evaluate this in your community, we would be more than happy to help. Okay, thank you. No questions. It's a very good question. I'm going to repeat so we have this in the microphone. So she asks, what is, how can, correct me if I'm wrong, how can we balance the strategy of showcasing women's stories with the intention the, or the need they have sometimes to, ha to hide their gender, right? We need to showcase wha who wants to be showcased. It's not something we, sh we can force. You know, it's not. So what happens in the, when hindered the gender, the, the person who, who hides the gender is, is like the person who is behind the scenes usually. So you have a GitHub profile and you don't show your picture, for example, because you don't want to be identified as a woman. As a woman. And this woman is facing this challenge. And there are papers already in part of this study showing that this, should, this, can, be, this can, can be two sides of a carrot. This can be sometimes not beneficial to the to woman. So it's, it's hard. We cannot obligate women to be showcases. But some women want to be there. Some women don't care about showing the gender. And those women who care about, we should, we should talk to them and make them feel safe, you know but we cannot obligate. It's not like I'm going to show every woman face in the screen, it's not that. But some, some, some women want, some women would like to. Lawrence? Yeah, so one thing that I've seen is that in terms of vis public visibility, a lot of women become prominent, mm -hmm. they start getting, they become attacked viciously. Sexualized, not physically, but their, the the words are, are are sexualized attacks. What? Yes, like that. Yeah. Okay. And and a lot of times, men are attacked 
simulated, but not in that conceptualized manner. But these are alpha male, like CEO types who are just crazy assholes anyway, and they they let it rub off. So there's that type of thing. So there's but so, so sometimes this is, sometimes the men the men are just get taxed with bad, but they don't. But they're just assholes and they don't care. So that so I've seen that one. Number two is the the other issue is you need to be a prominent public figure to be a member of the community. And that's a big question. So you need to be speaking on panels, you need to be talking on Twitter, you need to be posting and writing articles. And what, how important is that to be present and to be helping, encouraging, and have what, what you were said is needed to mm -hmm. be able to have this sense of belonging. And so that's a big open question. You need to be open in public. You have to be a Jackie Robinson to be a, have a statement to be out there to be encouraging, be out encouraging others. And that's the, I don't know the answer to that. Yeah. So it's like the, you can see the challenges they are, they overlap, and the strategies can be synergic. Because uh, women hide the gender because of gender biased contributions. And why are they? doing that because they are facing those bias. So those bias need to stop. Were, were there any studies in, in your analysis uh -huh. that <coughs> identified practices that are effective at increasing the participation of people in the open source? No, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. There are no studies about the sense of belonging. There are, and I'm gonna answer your question in two parts because I thought you were going to stop in the middle. So <laughs> uh, the question was uh, repeating here. Are there any strategies showing results in practice? And I, I thought the question was going to stop there. So I'm going to answer this. Uh, most of the studies are presenting, suggesting strategies that were not properly tested yet in practice. So this is being uh, covered in, in the papers, like strands to, to validate. But uh, they, so most are not tested in practice and there was no study evaluating especially uh, uh, the sense of belonging. So this is why I separate. Yeah, and okay. one more thing. If you throw in the subject, the technology professional professionals or you, you broaden the subject larger, you get a larger idea of things that work to work and not work, but then you, you apply it to open source, it becomes a much more the literature becomes much hard, mm -hmm. harder to find. Yes. Yes. Thank you very much Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for asking that. So the question was, I'm focused here in the presentation about open source challenges, but are there uh, challenges that are unique to, your, to open source and do not happen in corporate settings, right? So I have another study on that. So it was the challenges and strategies to increase women in software development in industry. And um, uh, I'm going back to the challenges slide. So, if we, imposter syndrome is stereotyping, non-inclusive communication, work-life balance, toxic culture, lack of peer parity happen also in the software industry. The only two challenges that were not mentioned by women who I surveyed in the software industry, because I think they are more specific to the open source ecosystem, are the gender identified contributions because in a, in a company, may, even, if, even when you work remote, most of the people know your gender. You are not, you are not only a, like a GitHub profile, for example. So the gender identified contributions were not, is not a challenge that was mentioned by women there. 
And also the community reception issues, also not a challenge. You use your, usually the companies nowadays have like onboarding programs and this is not happening. But they mentioned other, other challenges. So for example, the maternity wall, which is uh, something that happened when you are a mother, you are a parent, it's more for mothers in this case, but you are a parent and then you receive less work because you're a parent. So this was mentioned by the women in software industry and happened differently in open source, can happen differently in open source because there, there was a study uh, from Emerson Murphy uh, that showed that uh, women try to not show pictures of themselves with children to avoid this maternity wall and then have even less chances of getting uh, acceptance in open source. So it's like the same challenges happening in different ways, you know, but most of them are not uh, particular from open source. Okay, I have five, five minutes. I have one minute. I have no minute. I don't like questions. All right, so we got a virtual question from Renee. It says, have you looked into the effects of corporate education training? In my experience, well-intentioned corporate HR training telling men to accept women backfires. They resent being told what to do, how mm -hmm. to act, and double down mm -hmm. on declaring someone a diversity hire and continue their bad behavior. I think someone should look into this. Uh, yes, thank you for your question. The literature is not reporting exactly this strategy, but it's part of the strategy here of promote uh, groups that it was showing that uh, promoting scholarships and, and promoting the education since the beginning, but scholarship for girls is not the same as training men. So it was not being mentioned in literature, but I know another paper that, another study that deals with that because uh, uh, girls are stereotyped since, since they are very young, because uh, they have different cognitive styles, uh, men and women, to approach problems. And so there is a, a study from the, the psychology showing that sometimes a little girl and a little boy can be uh, presented to the same problem to, to solve, and they have different ways of solving. And sometimes the man, uh, 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 the boy is like splitting the problems in small ones and solving each part. And since for the teacher, for the small uh, kid teacher, that he is having more progress because sometimes the girl wants to understand as a whole, have a whole understanding like information processing style to then start solving it. And then the solution will, will uh, appear later on. But they have different styles. And then sometimes, these studies show it that sometimes the teacher goes and say, oh, you, this is not a problem for you. This is a problem for him. So it's, this uh, question is important because we need to train the not only the men, but the team, we, tr we need to train the teachers to understand people, independent of the gender, men, women, whatever, can have different ways to solve problems. And this is not like I'm going to disclassify a person because it's not having the same way of solving, you know. Any other questions? Lawrence? Very good. Okay. I, I think the, the teacher point that you make is, is actually something that, 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 that you know, some of the challenges that the pipeline is choked off. Yes. Yeah. So it's it's happening. So we need to train we need to understand what's happening, and this is why I'm doing this study. I'm understanding what is happening, making awareness of this. We need to train both, we need to train all genders. So we need to understand what is happening to train everyone to deal with everyone uh, equally. And nobody asked me about why am I studying women? 
Nobody asking? Huh? No, I, I like not because of this. I have five minutes, so I can tell. So, okay. Uh, diversity is about being different. So there are many uncountable uh, different aspects of diversity. Gender is only one. There are many unrepresented genders. Women is only one population. So I'm achieving one population of one aspect of diversity. I need to focus on something. But if we look at this study as an, as an opportunity of research, we can understand this like uh, people make decisions. And I am studying how women decide to join, stay, or leave. We could use the similar approach to other populations. You know, so I am a woman, I identify my, my gender as a woman, but this study could be applied and be used by other, to study other populations too. I think I don't have more time, but thank you.